Oddly, the short path runs up to the mountain wall here, but leads nowhere else. Incredible. The door you have discovered has taken on the appearance of a face. It is silent, however, and almost seems to be waiting for something. Uh, greetings. I am King Graham of Daventry. Would you by any chance know of the way to a strange island on which stands a quartz tower in which a beautiful woman is being held captive? You feel more than a little foolish. Surely a door, even one with a face, would neither hear nor understand you. I am the, am the door of destiny. I am sought out by many, found by few and opened by none so far. For indeed, only once can I be opened. Such is the magic that I am. Through me will you find the destiny you seek, if can not perform a task. Anything! You feel intense exuberance that you have come so close to your goal in such a short time. You must bring me the gems of nature. I beg your pardon? The stone door rumbles from deep within. For a time, it says nothing. And then... Gems of three I ask of thee to fetch, collect, and bring to me. In water shall you find the first, though not the type to quench your thirst. Spy the second high in the sky, with wings or no, thou still must fly. Through swampy mire, so it is heard, in lone dark castle lies the third. Should you succeed, my noble king, to your fair maiden, I will bring. I warn you though, you should beware. A danger cloaked awaits you there. Without warning, the stony face falls silent. As you watch, it gradually smooths out to become the mountainside face once more. You notice that, within the door, three shallow indentations have sunk into the rock's surface. Presumably, the three gems of nature must fit here. Now all you have to do is find them. How did that poem go again? A piece of paper has blown here in the wind. The paper is torn and dirty. It looks like a flyer of some sort. You smooth out the torn and tattered paper and read, Curios I have, to the town do come, awaiting I am. Greetings again, merchant. Yes, many greetings. Need you have now for my wares of great specialty? What wares do you sell, good merchant? For yourself, behold them. You look over the merchant's wares of great specialty and quickly reevaluate them as junk. You seem to have quite a selection of, well, quite a selection. A keen eye have you. In an item or two, provoke interest, I might? A daunting task. Uh, if, uh, rather, by all means. This I have. You appraise the object he holds up to you. 
It is a simple shell, intricately fashioned into the shape of a comb. The workmanship is unlike anything you have ever seen. Fascinating. Where did you find such a thing? Oh, old it is. From ancient times descends. Valuable, without question. Royal property, former, to be sure. You consider his story. Then you begin wondering which beach he found it on. If I were to, say, purchase the shell, what would it cost? A trifle would you expend. Seven golds. I fear that I did not bring any money. Curiosity, I find, in one who travels but with nothing to barter brings. Good point. Talking to yourself isn't necessarily a sign of madness. When you start answering yourself, then you should consider seeking professional help. Might you trade the shell comb for something? The merchant ponders over this for a moment. Of value, many things are. Of fancy, only one I have. And that is? Pearls! Would you be interested in this pearl? Indeed, I would. In return, the shell I present to you. May you be always groomed well. The merchant grabs the pearl and tosses the shell comb to you. Then he saunters off. History will decide how greatly you were just swindled. Oh, what a beauty. This will be worth a fortune back home. Yes? Could you recommend another good book? There! This book is entitled Way Below Your League, A Look at Sentient Aquatic Life. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt. This large fallen log is all that remains of a once grand tree. You peer into the depths of the dark hole. As luck would have it, you discover a beautiful set of earrings hidden inside. Each one is laced with glittering diamonds and contains a lovely blue sapphire stone in the center. Perhaps someone stashed them here. At any rate, you take them into your possession. The roof looks weather-worn, but still leak-free. The quaint cottage is, for the most part, well-managed and orderly. Someone has obviously put a lot of effort into its upkeep. You feel that you might be welcome here. It is a mailbox. 
This is the first time you have ever set eyes upon one, which isn't surprising. The postal system won't be invented for another few centuries to come. The residents of this land must either possess clairvoyance or just simply be ahead of their time. You open the mailbox. Inside, there is, incredibly, a letter addressed to the resident. You decide to leave it in there. A card has been dropped in it also. You read it. You replace the card and close the mailbox.